Well, as more Minnesotans start to get the COVID-19 vaccine every day, many of us are hopeful that life will soon be back to normal. Yeah, but despite the vaccine, some things like masks and social distancing will still be a part of our daily lives. And joining us live with more is the Chief Quality Officer for M Health Fairview, Dr. Abe Jacob. Good morning, Dr. Jacob. Good morning, Alex and Cody. How are you? We're doing well. We're going to start out with masks, a subject that we, we know about well, and we'd like to get you know past that point, but we're not there yet. So why are they still important even after someone gets the vaccine? Yeah, and we get this question a lot, and I think we're all looking forward to getting back to our normal lives without having to see each other in masks. Uh, so the vaccine we know um, does a great job of reducing our risk of uh, disease uh, by about 95 percent. But that means that there's still a 5 percent risk of still getting a significant infection. So that's one reason. Uh, the second reason is we don't know yet from the data whether uh, the vaccine reduces the risk of being actually infectious. So even though I might not be symptomatic or will get really sick, I could still spread COVID uh, to my loved ones or to my coworkers. And uh, the third reason, which has been in the news, is obviously the variants that we're keeping track of, both from uh, England, South Africa, and Brazil. We had our first reported case uh, uh, in Minnesota, actually, in the country uh, uh, of the Brazil variant. And uh, we still don't have enough data about the effectiveness of the vaccine with those variants. Now, I understand you don't have a crystal ball. You can't predict the future necessarily. But it, going forward, knowing what we know now, and hopefully we continue to learn more as the, the days, weeks, and months go on, do you see a point in the future, however distant it may be, that we're not wearing masks in public? Or is this just something we should really get used to uh, even you know, two, three, four, however many years down the road? Yeah, that's a very common question I get asked by my own kids and uh, neighbors and certainly coworkers. I think um, I think for the near future we can anticipate wearing masks until we get to this notion of herd immunity. And what we'll start to see is significant drops in infection rates and hospitalizations. And once we see a really low sustained rate of infection rates in the community, um, I think people will start. You know, the guidelines will suggest we can start taking the masks off in terms of risk. It'll be interesting to see what happens with other epidemics like influenza and other viruses we see in the community, whether masks will become kind of a, a thing of the future for epidemics like that. I, I, my guess is that they will be because we've seen such a drop in influenza and other viruses in the community. So I wouldn't be surprised if for future, you know, epidemics, not, you know, and pandemics, obviously, but for epidemics, we might see masks become more of a, a part of our culture. We, we hear about that term herd immunity we have for a, a while now. What is the percentage roughly of population to reach that herd immunity level? Yeah, so generally most people consider uh, getting to her herd immunity around, you know, about 70 to 80 percent of the population is considered immune to the uh, uh, cor coronavirus. Uh, it, it really is a calculation uh, uh, that they, they plug in in terms of uh, the infectiousness of a, a coronavirus, what that what they call the R naught factor is, and so once that drops to a low level, and we basically have stopped the spread of coronavirus, uh, we've essentially reached herd immunity. So obviously, we know the masks. We've talked a lot about that. What other safety protocols will will people still need to follow once they're vaccinated moving forward? Yeah, so it's, it's the good news is it's essentially the same messaging uh, that we've been hearing from the Minnesota Department of Health and. Uh, the CDC, and that is, you know, wearing a mask, avoid, um, you know, large crowds uh, where socially, being socially distanced is difficult, um, you know, washing our hands, and then uh, obviously if you are feeling symptoms or feeling sick, don't go to work and try and avoid uh, being in crowds until you get tested for coronavirus. So essentially the same um, recommendations we've been talking about for, well, since, you know, this began, uh, still hold true until we get more data about the vaccine. So we know Minnesotans over the age of 65 now have access to the vaccination. Uh, who will be next? What is the next group? Yeah, so we're really focused on those highest risk people, the people that are actually have the highest risk of mortality from, from COVID. So those uh, 75 and over, 65 and over. And then we're going to start to go into the higher risk category. So those who have you know, chronic medical illnesses or, or disease, those who are immunocompromised. Um, we are still waiting for that kind of definitive criteria about how to prioritize uh, those various populations and, um, you know, and how we began the staging of, the, of that immunization. 
Okay, uh, good uh, information. Dr. Abe Jacob, thank you so much. Chief Quality Officer for M Health Fairview. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.